20 years ago, I was using three times the amount of basal background insulin that I use today. You can drastically change how much insulin you need every single day as a person with or without diabetes with one really simple daily habit. The biggest change in my life between then and now is that I exercise every single day. With this habit, I have cut my own insulin needs by two thirds. When I was 19, 20 years old, I was taking 32 units a day of Lantus insulin. Lantus is a long acting basal insulin. So it covers my body's background insulin needs. Every single day, your body needs a constant drip of insulin. If your pancreas isn't working, you need to get that constant background drip through an insulin pump or through a long acting insulin. Today, I take nine, sometimes 10 units a day of Lantus insulin, 20 units less than I used to need in order to keep my blood sugars in my target range. When I was 19, my A1C was a full point higher than it is today. So I'm using less insulin and managing even tighter blood sugar levels. At 20 years old, I was about 30 pounds heavier than I am today. I was sedentary. I was not thinking about my diet. I was not thinking about how much processed food am I eating? How many calories am I consuming just in drinks? How much whole food am I eating? How many vegetables am I eating? How much protein am I eating? None of that. I did not really exercise. It was here and there. I might go for a job but I wasn't a consistent exerciser. And I got tired of that. I got tired of feeling lousy. I got tired of seeing my insulin needs going up, watching my blood sugar go up, watching my A1C go up. So one summer, I made a really big change. I started exercising every single day. I started teaching myself weightlifting. I was doing basic weightlifting, nothing crazy. It wasn't CrossFit. CrossFit didn't even exist back then. All compound movements like shoulder press, chest press, bent over rows. In addition to lifting weights three times a week, I started going to power yoga classes. Power yoga is a great mix of deep stretching with a lot of movement that actually builds a sweat. So it's kind of like going on a power walk mixed with some strength training. I also started walking, just walking every day. I wasn't even jogging. I was just walking every single day for at least a half an hour. And yes, I started paying more attention to my diet. I started making sure that I was getting some vegetables at least once a day. I started eating more oatmeal and yogurt instead of whatever processed junk I was eating before. I don't even remember, but it wasn't real food. I remember I was living with my aunt at the time. This was over the summer. So I wasn't doing a lot of cooking. I was 20. I didn't know how to do a lot of cooking. To get my vegetables, I was just taking that frozen veggie medley that they sell at Costco and the grocery store. It's like peas, corns, carrots, string beans. Pouring a bunch of it into a bowl, microwaving it, adding some salt, and that was one of my staple foods every single day to make sure I was getting more vegetables, more fiber, more whole food. It wasn't some complicated, fancy vegetable saute. It was just vegetables from the freezer in the microwave. It was a whole lot better than what I was eating before. I just generally started paying more attention to what are you eating? What's in the stuff you're eating? How much of it is real whole food, clean protein? I wasn't on a strict diet. I didn't make a bunch of rules that eliminated a bunch of types of foods. I was still probably eating dessert here and there. I was working at a movie theater. I'm sure I was still eating some popcorn. By the end of that summer, my background insulin dose had dropped from 32 units a day to about 24, 25 units a day. And I lost about 15 pounds, but then gained about five pounds of noticeable muscle. When I got back to college in the fall, my friends looked at me and they're like, whoa, what happened to you? Guess what? I got fed up with feeling lousy and treating my body poorly. I started exercising every day and eating more real food. It wasn't crazy magic. 
Then I got really into exercise. I joined a gym instead of the college gym. And I hired a personal trainer because I wanted to learn even more about lifting weights. I accidentally fell into competitive powerlifting. I ended up getting really strong really quickly. Over the course of the next two years, my insulin needs came down to about 18 units a day. At this point, I'm now a certified personal trainer. I'm competing in powerlifting, training in powerlifting every day, training clients every day, teaching power yoga myself several times a week, and showing up every morning to walk on the treadmill or walk on the street with my friend. My long acting insulin dose is down to 18 units a day, even though I've put on another 15 pounds of muscle, making me 35 pounds heavier than I weigh right now. At 22 years old, I still hadn't really learned how to do much cooking. So I was still eating things that were ready to go. Vegetables from the freezer, chicken sausage I could cut up and just saute quickly, a lot of deli meat. I was eating carbohydrates, but I was very methodical about my carbohydrates. I was definitely following that powerlifting carb loading program where you eat more carbs on the day that you train the bigger muscle groups like your legs and back. A funny thing when you're doing really heavy weightlifting or something like CrossFit where you're really building a lot of muscle is it can actually cause your insulin needs to be a little higher than if you were just doing cardio because all that muscle needs to grow and it needs food to grow, right? And it needs glucose to grow and you need insulin to take that food and bring that energy to your muscles to help them grow. So the fact that I needed eight units more insulin back when I was powerlifting compared to today isn't a bad thing. It's because my body was carrying a lot of muscle back then and I was asking my body to do a very intense thing all the time. That required a lot more food every day than I need today. And more food means more insulin. Around the time I was 25 years old, I had to stop lifting heavy weights. I was experiencing a lot of pain that was eventually diagnosed as fibromyalgia. I could not lift heavy weights anymore. For one whole year at least, it's hard to remember, I stopped powerlifting and the only exercise I did was walking my dogs every day. I was trying to let my body recover and calm down from whatever it was powerlifting did to me that made me feel so much pain and exhaustion. At this point, my insulin needs are now still hanging out around 17, 18 units a day. I went through two pregnancies over the next couple of years, walking every day during those pregnancies, lifting a little bit of weight, really tiny weights, weights that you might give to your grandmother. Nothing crazy, just making sure I was using those muscles every day. I was also eating very whole foods most of the time. Again, I had no crazy food rules. I had not eliminated any food groups. I was eating carbs, I was eating fat. I was just trying to eat mostly whole foods. And I was walking every single day. Sometimes a walk would look like a sprint through the woods in the deep snow. That was a good workout. It was only like 10 minutes, right? But I was sprinting, it was mixing it up. At this point, I weighed about five pounds more than the weight I weigh today because I'd lost all that bulky powerlifting muscle. I wasn't doing anything to maintain it, which meant that my insulin needs also continued to drop. Even though my exercise wasn't so intense, my insulin needs actually came down. At this point, I weighed about five pounds more than I weigh today because I gradually lost all that powerlifting bulky muscle that I'd worked so hard to build. Even though muscle does burn more calories at rest, it also requires more calories to maintain. By the time I hit 30 years old, I was down to a 11 units of Lantus insulin a day. Now I'm doing very light weightlifting and I'm getting a lot of cardio exercise. I started jumping rope a little bit. I'm jogging through the woods, walking my dogs a lot. Nothing crazy. You know, I'm also juggling two little kids, working, working from home, juggling kids at home. It was a very busy time. I'm not eating a crazy diet. I am still focused on just eating mostly whole foods. At this point, I'm definitely cooking for myself and for my family. Whole vegetables, real protein, quality food, real fruit, real fats, every single day. Around the age of 32, my insulin needs went from 11 units a day to about 15 units a day, very suddenly because of stress. 
At this time in my life, I started the process of divorce. And even a pretty mellow divorce can be very stressful because you've got two little kids and you're trying to refigure households. That stress boosted my cortisol levels and my insulin needs jumped up pretty quickly. At the same time, what's peculiar is that I dropped five pounds to the weight that I am today. So my insulin needs went up from the stress despite having lost five pounds, which really demonstrates just how much of an impact daily stress can have on your blood sugar levels and your insulin needs. Once the dust settled, my insulin needs came back down to about 10 units a day. I still don't do any crazy exercise. I still don't follow any crazy diets. I try to eat mostly whole food mixed with plenty of cardio and a little bit of light weights. I walk my dog twice a day, about two miles per walk. I go to the gym or I run outside for about 30 minutes or I get my cardio by jumping rope and I do a little bit of lifting weights. I still can't lift big weights. I still eat dessert pretty much every single day. I'm not on any crazy diet. I am a big fan of intermittent fasting and most days I do fast until lunchtime. But that's really more about when you eat, not what you eat. At a certain point a few years ago, I did start having some insulin resistance I couldn't pinpoint. I was like, what is causing this? And I'd increase my Lantus one unit from 10 to 11 units, and I'd find I'd gain a pound with that increase in the dose. It didn't make any sense. That's why I started taking metformin, and metformin has been really helpful for me as a person with type 1 diabetes for just maintaining that basic insulin sensitivity. Insulin sensitivity can be very frustrating. Even if you don't produce any of your own insulin, even if you have type 2 diabetes and you will always need to be on insulin, there's still things you can do, like daily exercise and looking closely at what you're eating, to help keep your insulin needs as low as possible. Reducing your insulin needs can be really important for your long-term health. If you are already doing all of these things and you've been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and you're watching your insulin needs go up and up and up, it's actually very possible that you have been misdiagnosed with type 2 diabetes and you actually have type 1 diabetes. Learn more about that in this video. There are other health conditions that could make your body need more insulin despite your best efforts to exercise and eat well every single day. So if your insulin needs are going up and up and you haven't been misdiagnosed with the wrong type of diabetes, definitely talk to your healthcare team to rule out other potential causes of increasing insulin resistance. All of this points out a really important thing. If you are actively trying to exercise more, eat differently and lose weight, you need to adjust your insulin doses every step of the way. If you don't, you'll be low all the time. Imagine if I had started all of those changes at 20 years old and I never adjusted my Lantus insulin dose. Can you imagine how many low blood sugars I'd be having all the time? How much extra food I'd be eating to feed all that extra insulin? You've got to fine tune your insulin doses throughout your life based on the changes that are going on. Sometimes it's lifestyle changes. Sometimes it's stress. Sometimes it's age. Don't let your insulin doses just stick at one place for the rest of your life. They need to be adjusted and fine tuned with support from your healthcare team. People with type 1 diabetes diabetes and some people with type 2 diabetes have this extra hill to climb because insulin is not the only hormone we don't produce properly. We also don't produce properly a whole bunch of hormones that maintain things like how much sugar your liver produces, telling your brain that you're full after eating, maintaining basic insulin sensitivity, how well your cells respond to insulin, how quickly your blood sugar spikes after eating. All of those things make it harder to manage or lose weight, which means it's also harder to manage and maintain insulin sensitivity. There is no shame in letting medications like metformin or Ozempic or Manjaro help you maintain insulin sensitivity, help you compensate for those other hormones that your body isn't producing properly. None of those medications are a band-aid. You have to put in the work. The medication just supported you along the way. So I cut my total daily background insulin dose from 32 units a day down to nine or 10 units a day with exercise and trying to eat mostly whole foods.
So the big message is get moving. It doesn't have to be a crazy thing. It doesn't require a gym membership. It doesn't require hours and hours a day. Go for a walk. Go for a walk tomorrow morning. Go for a walk after dinner. Get moving. It makes a difference. Consistency counts. Make it happen every day. Thanks for watching Diabetes Nerd. Learn how to exercise safely while taking insulin in this book, Exercise with Type 1 Diabetes, available on Amazon.